This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Eki Gamble. Yeah, welcome to another episode of the Modicast, and like always, is Leon next to me. Hey, Leon, how's hey, it going? How are you? Very good, thanks. I'm pretty, pretty excited about the week, all the things that are coming up over here. But sure. for the Modicast, we also have exciting th things ahead of us. Yeah, we do. Um, we have an interview with Bill Anderson, who is a Marketo pro who oh. discovered Mordic for himself, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about that and, and more in a bit. And we have things in the Mordic universe, yeah. of course, like uh, Mordic 301 arrived, the first iteration of Mordic 3, and we had another and the last official release of Mordic 2, that is 2.16.3. So going forward, we may see a security patch if necessary. Other than that, mm -hmm. Mordic 2 is now officially a legacy and we're full speed ahead with Mordic 3. Finally. <laughs> yeah. We talked about the release cycle that the product team gave themselves and that, that includes a monthly patch release, even in summer. And uh, so in other words, 3.0.2 is uh, hopefully uh, going to see the light of the sun <laughs> by end of July. I'm pretty sure. You are okay. Yeah, I'm too. <laughs> Trust yeah. team product. Yeah, they're they're really rocking it these days. Yeah, and um, yeah, and acceleration ahead even. Um, yeah, let's talk about Mordic. I I did that a lot recently because I had a bit of conversation with with people on LinkedIn. Ah. and among those was a friend of mine called Artem Kraut, mm -hmm. uh, and Artem. Uh, asked me to to give a little background on the term of CRM integration. What what does it mean? What is the scope in, in terms of Mordic? Most people know what a CRM is yeah. and uh, many have a CRM integration in place. Mm -hmm. uh, but but others don't and others and, and some don't need know the full reach. So um, yeah let's let's do that for a moment and start with the fact that Mordic is not a CRM. That's the first misconception that we frequently run across, um, that people think, oh, Mordic is a potential CRM for ourselves. Then I ask you, why isn't Mordic a CRM? Oh, I hope that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> 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 um, now, a CRM, seriously, obviously, is, is a lot more than the Mordic. We do have contact and company in, in Mordic, and we, we have a little bit of management for that. But we don't have uh, sales opportunities. We don't have a pipeline. We are not logging phone calls and all that. So a CRM, a CRM is much more than Mordic is supposed to be. Yep. It, it is a marketing automation tool. If you look at our friends at HubSpot, they have two products. One is the marketing automation and the other, other is the CRM. Mm -hmm. And plus there are other products. And those tie, uh, tie into each other nicely. But just as nice, we can tie the Mordic uh, product into the HubSpot CRM. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense to have a sophisticated CRM that you should be using and uh, to integrate very well with Mordic. Now, what, what, is, uh, what could integration look like? There are uh, gazillions of... of <laughs> ways to do that or, or, or use cases but the typical ones are fairly simple yeah. so if you want to start really low you have you put a set up a cron job and say i want to move all the known contacts that we generate in, in mortic right away to the crm so whenever a form is filled in a lead is generated from the mortic perspective that is handed over to the CRM system, and when I say via cron, that means on a uh, periodical basis. Yep. And that also brings us to the first uh, decision to be made. A contact in in Mautic is is a person, um, and we often refer to it as a lead because lead generation is a big deal in Mautic or in marketing. Um, on the other hand, other, on the other end, in the CRM, 
um, we have typically multiple things like like there is a contact and there is a lead which is a potential contact uh, both are person entities but are they are not the same so how would i map those two the con the person in in in, in mortic and the multiple person objects in 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 the crm that's a decision to be made it is <laughs> um and whatever it is uh sales is gonna deal with it but it it, it should uh, be a conscious decision okay so so scenario is we we uh, move every person that we learn about in, in Mordic, move him or her to the CRM system the next would be to do just that but not every person only those who reach a certain score level yeah so a certain number of points um, that's a, the typical marketing qualified lead so once they get to 90 points they move on to the crm and are dealt with over there mm -hmm. and when i say dealt with over there that's um the, the other part of background the, the modic is typically run by marketing the crm should be run by sales true and uh a very big top topic we could talk about that <laughs> for hours i think how to best make them cooperate or, or streamline oh yeah that's a science for itself <laughs> yeah yeah um, like magic in some cases <laughs> okay um, and you could go on there like a uh, score based or campaign based so there yeah. could be a campaign action to move a contact or push a contact to the crm system um or a an example beyond that would be that if we have in contact that we learn about in Mortic, mm -hmm. we take that one to the CRM uh, and, and look it up whether we have that contact in the CRM already, typically matched by the email address. Mm -hmm. And if so, we, we move the data back to the to Mortic so we know more about that person in uh, in inside of Mortic and can deal with her him more more specifically so it's a two-way process we can get m data from modic into the CRM. absolutely and you're right yeah th yeah that, that's a big difference or a big difference we were now moving from one way to a two-way uh lane <laughs> um yeah so yeah th th you could come up with examples of what to do with that uh, information but uh, yeah the idea is there um, or you could go even further and say, okay, let's let's move all the contacts from the CRM into Mordic. I don't like that too much because uh, we all, we also have to consider data privacy, data security, um, and less is better. But um, if you go a little bit further than that, then you could say, okay, we have a certain segment of contacts in the CRM mm -hmm. and we want to work with them actively in Mordic. So here's here's a list of, let's say, 100 or 1,000 contacts. Mm -hmm. We move them into Mordic, flag them in a way, or put them into a segment and start a campaign directly. That could be anything. It could, could be an email campaign. It could even be a postcard or a letter that is sent out of Mordic yeah. um, and then you, you go from there. People use that for trade shows for instance if they want to send invitations send out vouchers or, or invite to, to get your voucher etc. So active campaigns um, that are triggered by the CRM are about completely dealt with by Mordic and of course then the, the feedback is, is returned to the CRM. That's pretty smart, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it can, can again go beyond that. So if you have the tracking on the on the uh, trade show in the booth, who attended, and that is uh, that goes back into Mordic and then the feedback loop and all that. Um, so um, that's the point where fantasy starts. <laughs> I mean, that's not. <laughs> unrealistic science fiction fantasy but but where can you where you can get creative and, and come up with really smart campaigns oh yeah yeah good and um yeah uh, maybe that's that's enough for examples and then why you want to integrate uh marketing automation with sales yeah. um 
but it should be mo motivation enough for everybody. Now, the other question by, by Artem was, um, what does it take to, integ to integrate my CRM system? Because there are hundreds, probably thousands of, of CRMs on the market. At least. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and, and it's a pain. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a couple of handful of very visible CRM systems, well-known CRM systems, and most of them are already integrated with Mordic or do already integrate with Mordic. Like we talked about HubSpot CRM, but also Salesforce and Soho, etc. But also the open source flavors like like Sugar CRM, V V Tiger, yep. um, and more. So there there is a good list of existing public integrations. Um, if you need your own integration, you can always do that. In Mordic, you're open source. You can do whatever you like. You're so free. we recently did a CRM integration with SAP, C4C product. Um, mm -hmm. That was with Mordic 2, with the, with the Mordic CRM bundle technology. Basically, there is an existing framework for integ integrations like that. And um, you pretty much uh, only do, do the, the custom parts yep. and uh, everything else looks and feels the same and that makes sense. Um, it was Mordic 3, we now have the, the generic integrations bundle. It's more sophisticated, more modern. Oh, perfect. But, but either way, it's, it's not a big deal to, to create your own integration with Mordic deep inside of it. Um, even easier is to use one of the uh, existing generic integration frameworks like Zapier that most people know or Integromat that we recently talked about. Yeah. And then there's another one. Yeah, a new thing on the block. It's called uh, Notemation. It's reachable under the URL n8n.io. And the product is also called N8N, but they want to be pronounced Notemation. Okay. And it basically works like Zapier, so you can uh, get contact to create and update them, also delete them. And if you feel the need, you can trigger it via a webhook. And yeah, um, you should take a look at it if you want to contribute instead of our <laughs> weekly feature wish. We wish uh, to yeah improve the modic node the main source code contributor is ricardo espinosa you can find him uh, on notemation so if you wish to contribute um it's open source by the way so <laughs> yeah important pretty easy to contribute and if you want to just uh, message ricardo espinosa and feel free to contribute and s start getting it ahead yeah it's all, all on github so yeah regular means the other thing is um if you are playing around with it and then have an actual use case, uh, like all, like always, you should uh, publish your workflows. Yeah. You know, this is this notion of workflows for the individual products, and we want to see ten or twenty more <laughs> workflows really soon. So that's our feature wish for the week. Yeah, okay. yeah. very good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this thing. It's it's pretty pretty much brand new. Yeah, um, but but because this is the first uh, open source thing, um, it's it's promising. It has a lot of potential. Yeah, yeah. We'll see where it goes. Um, where we go, I know that we go straight to the interview with uh, Bill Anderson, and uh, I already mentioned that um, he's by profession a Marketo guy, yeah. but uh, nonetheless, he found out about something else. Here we go. Hey, welcome, Bill. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for Thank being you. here. Um, I'm very happy that we met online, of course, recently. Mm -hmm. um, it turned out that, that we have really all ties into each other from the Type of 3 world. Yes. Um, so I take it you are also very familiar with the concept of open source, too. Oh, I love open source, yes. Uh, but... Obviously, we're talking about Mordic today, and in your mm -hmm. Martech background, you're located in Boston, in the Boston area, Boston area, anyway. Is that right? 
Yes, that's right. For some reason, that seems to be some sort of a Martech Valley, at, at least <laughs> from, from the European <laughs> point of view, and except it's not a valley, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, you you run the martechcouncil.org website, and, and I want to talk to you about that as well mm -hmm. later. But um, why don't we start with, with you telling us a little bit about your background? Sure. I'm actually a, I'm a graphic designer by trade, and I turned marketing automation professional a few years ago. Um, originally, I was... Uh, servicing ad agencies and design studios in the U.S. and Europe, and uh, and then I went on to be an art director at J. W uh, sorry, the New York Times. And one of the things that I had a problem with was that I kept getting my artwork late, and so I suggested <laughs> that they create an automated system, and. Uh, I used Typo3 to build this out, and then that later on launched me into automation, uh, open, a lot of open source. I learned uh, free BSD and eventually became a marketing automation professional. Wow, what a journey. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so what's your current role then? So I'm a solutions architect for DemandSpring, which is a Canadian revenue marketing consultancy, and I have clients in the Canada and the U.S., Uh, I'm also a uh, a three-time certified Marketo expert, and I'm a Marketo certified solutions architect. So I, I'm pretty deep in the Marketo world, but I, I truly love Modic. I think the things that I see Modic doing, I, it's just a, a, a great platform. Yeah, cool. And it's really always valuable to, to have people from, from other universes in the Modic world because mm -hmm. it's always good to learn from each other and yeah. to, to put things in, into relation. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to, to a lot of insights or, or mm -hmm. may, maybe uh, learnings, etc., that we can maybe get from you. So, but, sure. but uh, if you look at Modic as it is today, what do you like about it? Modic today, I think, so Modic, Modic has a beautiful interface. It's just, it's intuitive. It's, uh, it's got a robust API that you can plug into just anything. And more importantly, the fact that it's free and open source, uh, it, you know, for, for people who choose to self-host is terrific because that can be, in my opinion, a big game changer for nonprofits. Uh, the, the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, I do work with nonprofits on a regular basis outside of my job and, uh, they really can't afford eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars and upwards a year for, for hosting necessarily. And so I think that this could, this could be a major tool for many people. So yeah. What do you mean by game changer? Can you elaborate a little bit there? Sure. So nonprofits often get free limited licenses for Salesforce. HubSpot offers free tiers for uh, a limited amount of users. But as soon as you go back past those limits, um, it gets very expensive really quickly. So what I see a lot is that nonprofits will do all kinds of gymnastics to stay in the free tiers. They'll limit how their users are, are, are using it. or uh, And they're, they're so busy trying to stay free that they can't focus on what's important. And so Matic, either the, your self-hosted version or you know the, the professionally hosted version just allows you to, uh, to focus on what you need to do. And uh, I, I just think it's a lot easier for, for someone like a nonprofit. Yeah, it's, it's a big problem that, that, that once you get there beyond the free tier or, or to, to the, close to the limits, that you have that, that nasty lock-in. You can't just simply move yes. from A to B. Uh, so yes, if exactly. they start right, that's fine. If they are all already there, it's uh, I've seen that even even with commercial companies that they move from from X to Modic, mm -hmm. but it's a more or less a re-implementation. It's not just moving on. It is yes, uh, I, and and I've I've had to build several instances from scratch. Um, in Marketo that someone is moving from Market from HubSpot to Marketo or from uh, Salesforce Marketing Cloud to Marketo. And 
It is. You're, you're starting from scratch. You lose historical data. You don't have. Uh, y- you have a big hit in terms of your IT and and your your operations until people get used to it. So it's very difficult. Mm. On the other hand, maybe it's a healthy thing to throw away the first try and then yes. <laughs> start over <laughs> and then do it right from scratch. So uh, yeah, people <laughs> give it a shot and try, move over yes. to more. Okay, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, do you have uh, use cases maybe? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so, for example, I built a Marketo and Salesforce integration for a large uh, Boston-based rowing club. They do a lot of outreach, so they do uh, what do they call para rowing, or uh, you know, they they work with injured veterans and inner city kids, teach them how to row, teach them how to be on a a, a competitive team. And I really would like to convert their systems to Modic because I think that it would save that nonprofit at least ten thousand dollars a year or more. Hmm, that'd be a really cool case study also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think another one is that I worked with a local arts center to create a, a quite a sophisticated communication system that supports <clears throat> uh, it supports ticket sales, community outreach, and fundraising support. And you know, market it, Mar- Matic. I'm sorry, Matic is much more flexible and simple than many of the typical nonprofit CRMs, customer relation management systems like Blackbaud or, you know, Civis CRM, which there's just so many options that your typical volunteer can't understand and, and they just shut down. And Montic, you can, it, it, it's just so pleasant and simple to use that, uh, that it's easy for, for novices to come in and just simply work. Yeah, yeah. It's not like we're perfect already, but we're we'll be getting there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it's very pleasant to use. Yeah, it, it is, and 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 uh, with some some more education and even more improvements, um, it's it's a lot of uh, sky's the limit. Let's put yes. it that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so. particularly because it's open source, then that means that you can build on it. You know, and you can you can you can craft things the way you need it to. Whereas in a closed system like Adobe Cloud, Adobe Experience Cloud, uh, it, it's much more difficult to tailor it to your needs. You can to some degree, but it's still it's a walled garden, and you hit very hard stops when you need to do something. Yeah, it, it sometimes. I don't want to say it makes me smile, but but I, I look at at feature request uh, forums mm-hmm. for HubSpot, etc. Um, and yeah, some things can be done by Zapier and, and those guys, but many others are, you're just you depend on on the commercial vendor. Yes, and two uh, percent of that may be done <laughs> over time, but the other ninety eight percent are never going to happen. With That's which, right. which is understandable from their point of view, but the concept of open source obviously has a lot of advantage, advantages in that area. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we, I, I already mentioned the, the uh, MarTech Council project. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so I am the founder of the Marketing Technology Council, and this is a social enterprise. Uh, it helps students and non-traditional learners enter the marketing technology industry. And uh, MarTech is really great because you don't need a fancy pedigree. You simply need an attitude and an aptitude. And there are unlimited opportunities right now. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, so, for example, if you if you go into finance, a degree from community college or your, your, your local small university may not open doors, but a degree from Harvard will certainly get you the best jobs. Mm. Um, and, you know, MarTech is so new, it's a lot like being a webmaster in the 1990s. Uh, and, you know, and if you think about, for example, uh, I, an island community, they're often supported by tourism. And so kids don't really have a whole lot of choices. They can work for a hotel, they can work in agriculture, or they can leave the island to try to find a better job. And in many cases, you know, an EU island will have fiber connections and the kids could stay in their communities and uh, and continue to work and grow. And and that's not a fantasy. I've actually seen that. Yeah, and even more so today, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but on the other hand, if we think of improve, improving 
in all directions. What, what do you think are the biggest challenges for Mordic today? Um, I would say ease of use, documentation, and maintenance. Uh, for the most part, it's very easy to use. Uh, there are some st still hidden things. You know, for example, it took me a, a while to figure out how to embed a form. Uh, even though it's a simple one-line code, it was hard to find in the documentation at the time. Mm. And, you know, this was several years ago. But more than anything, all powerful systems really face these challenges. I think the, ten, the trend is more towards simple walled garden software like Squarespace or WordPress is also super simple to set up. Mm. And if these are your competitors, people are accustomed to that. Um, But I think at the same time, people quickly get frustrated with these systems as they get more sophisticated. And you need to take the time to learn a complex system like Typo3 and Modic if you want to. And once you do learn something like that, uh, you know, these advanced systems, you, you can go quite quickly and there's no limit to its use. So the, is it the first steps that are most important? I think the first steps are often the hardest. And really, it, it, it's twofold. It's It's learning the system, uh, and I think you know the the community is working on that with documentation and screencast and things like that. But the mental model of marketing automation is very difficult for people to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's more than an elaborate email provider. It, it can do much, much more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is in fact a problem by itself that people come from different uh, levels. So, some No marketing autom automation come mm -hmm. from HubSpot or whatever. Some know inbound marketing, but not the tools. Some don't yeah. even know the, know about the concept of inbound marketing. So either you, you have some sort of track for all of those, or you explicitly cut off at, at some point and say, okay, if we want to learn about marketing automation, oh, about inbound marketing concepts, go here. Go to HubSpot. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hub, yeah. HubSpot has a great yeah, HubSpot has a great content library, but they have a lot of people employed who oh, just generate that content. About that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But I have a lot of respect for that. They do mm -hmm. a really brilliant job there. Yes. Yeah. True. Yeah. Very good. Um, so, uh, how, how involved are you in the community in the US? Are you, do you have any insights there? It strikes me that, that although uh, uh, Mordic is a US-based or US-originated product and, and project, it seems like, like it's drifting away from there and it's more centri centering around Europe. There's strong mm -hmm. communities in Brazil, in Japan, and in Asia in general. But but US has gotten pretty pretty silent lately. Uh, or more general question: How how big is open source in the US in general? Oh, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, it, it's funny because I've talked to the Mar the Mautic people several times. Uh, they're actually based in Boston as well, mm. and I, I run into them at trade shows and things like that. Um, I do agree. I think much of the Europe-centric um, adoption may come from the fact that uh, we keep touching on Typo3, but Typo3 is a huge content management system in Europe, and it's tremendously powerful. And I think many of the people who uh, work with Typo3 also adopted Mautic because they see the power there as well. Uh, and I think in the U.S., m much of what's happening is... Um, is really we, we, we are focusing more on social media platforms and the, 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 the walled garden. Uh, and you've also got a tremendous com competition between Adobe Experience Cloud, uh, you know, which is uh, Adobe bought Ma uh, Marketo. Mm. And then also, uh, you know, Salesforce is and HubSpot are serious competitors. And I think they focus really more in the U.S. markets. And so it's hard to it's hard to have your voice heard. Uh, and Japan, I think Japan, I know that Marketo focuses a lot on Japan now. So I think that the automation is starting and the awareness is starting there. And the Japanese markets are, are just looking at other alternatives besides Marketo. Yeah, from, from some markets you hear that, that there is one player 
who is steering up the, the yeah. market and, and is raising interest in marketing automation and all the others or or the, the, the or some others uh, others are are uh, growing mm -hmm. just due to that fact that people get more interested find out that let's say marketo is not the right tool for them but then find mm -hmm. about, find out about an open source alternative a low cost alternative whatever um and um the, the only thing is that that uh marketing is not as close to open source as tech is so my my mm -hmm. experience or my background in the cms area is always that that people understand open source very well and and so the adoption or the the contribution if you work with with the open source product it's pretty natural to mm -hmm. uh, contribute and, and to to interact and so on and, and mar marketing even in in your personal behavior or in in your professional behavior you work mm -hmm. with world, world gardens and keep your secrets to yourself and etc so, yeah. yeah yeah i i think so and i i think too that you know many many marketers are used to the old school they don't they don't when you leave university you don't have the training that you need to naturally get into automation and marketing technology it's more the 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 things that you learn are in the stuck in the 1980s B buying you know buying media making billboards doing print ads and so the the logic isn't really there it's not not intuitive and that's funny because we as, as europeans always think that that u.s is uh years ahead of us <laughs> and so <laughs> so it should all be much more natural and much much more widespread than it is over here right okay, okay. yeah we'll see um um I, I sure hope that the u.s community for mordic will will get more substantial i think I one problem so is that, that there's this mix between the global community and the u.s community whereas mm -hmm. the japanese community or the german community etc mm -hmm. is in identity by itself by definition right. um, so maybe meetups etc more local mm -hmm. more regional things will may help to create identification we'll see Yeah, I hope so. I think the problem is really that there is a there is a three way battle with a lot of money uh, in North America for the the marketing automation space, and it's it's Adobe, Marketo, Salesforce, and HubSpot. It's not a whole lot of room for for an open source uh, open source community to uh, to to speak in that situation. But I think we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's on the product side, on the marketing side, and on the sales side. Um, on the, well, for, but for those who do use Mordic, because uh, there are a ton of Mordic users in the US, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. to connect and, and to interact and may, maybe even to, to join forces, um, that's not a bad thing. And why not? But we'll see. And um, yeah, you know, we're that, is, we're that is a very good point. That is a very good point because. Even when I was, you know, trying to uh, find modic reviews, it, it, there, there are few and far in between, and, and they're they're often dated. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the the biggest community I do find is on the Slack channel at this point. But I think you're right. I think I think we could build out a user community much better. Yeah, and we've we've talked about this in the podcast and elsewhere uh, frequently that it basically lacks the foundation at this point uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, at this point mm -hmm. um and uh, i've so so much input from from people who would like to do that but don't know how and where and everybody is, is building their islands and uh, i think we, we're we have very very promising com concepts there Th things are, are getting started right now and i'm really looking forward to to see that applied to to the yeah to north america basically yeah yeah, yeah that's a good idea Okie doke, Bill. Thank you so much. I'm going to let you go. Um, thanks thank for you. your time. It was a pleasure talking to you. You as well. And I hope we talk again soon. And maybe, uh, maybe you have some some more for us at the Morricon in November. Sounds good. Okie doke. Take care. Thank thanks. you. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah. Um, I always felt like uh, open source has like a kind of 
different flavor in the USA compared to the rest of the world. And that also gave us quite some insight on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not sure. It's it's a strange situation because Mordek is a US product from, yeah. from by birth, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, still has a lot of DNA. But but it's so international now, and I, I sure hope that uh, we'll see a stronger US community oh, really sure. soon once as again. well. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, which brings us to Mordicon, which was originally scheduled for um, the US. Mm -hmm. uh, now it is a global thing too. And we've really good news from there because we do have a, uh, a lead for the Mordicon working group now. Ooh, That's nice. uh, Mayjen mm -hmm. from the UK, Mayjen Jack. Um, and uh, yeah, we're happy to have her on board and we, I can report that we are making good progress in the oh, nice. preparations yeah. on, on every, in every area from, from the technical tooling all, all the way to the, the spirit and, and the, the content. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. And then uh, we'll see a request for papers, a call for papers real soon, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, there are some local events going on, um, but almost exclusively, or as far, as far as I know, exclusively online these days again. Um, our friend Toby in Nigeria is, is hosting the monthly Lagos uh, meetup, mm -hmm. and um, I'll have the pleasure to be part of that this Ooh, month. Nice. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and um, teams are going crazy these days the, the official modic teams they all have a ton of work to do so oh, yeah. once again if you are interested in, in being part of any of that you're still very very welcome especially in team education i hope that's <laughs> the best <laughs> team so <laughs> <laughs> of course it is <laughs> yeah okay doke uh, that's it for today it is thanks everybody uh for listening and uh like always do spread the word um Look at the show notes on Mordicon. Oh man, no, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's the Mordicast. <laughs> the Mordicast .com. Um, You'll find the links in that show notes and uh, maybe a little bit extra. Uh, mostly we do have some, some follow ups. Uh, yeah, do follow us on, on Twitter and all the other channels as well. Give us feedback, Please. give us thumbs up. Give us a love. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, be back next time. Until then, have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.